Uh, greetings, greetings. Bill Nye here on Facebook Live in the Star Talk studio. And uh, I'm here with uh, the remarkable and insightful and hilarious and very nice Chuck Nice. Oh. Chuck Nice. Hey, Bill. What's uh, happening? Chuck, How are you, uh, Well, we're on Facebook Live. Facebook the world Live. could be watching if the world chose to The world could watch. be watching if the world chose to we watch. We have a topic today that you want to discuss. Well, you know, before we, uh, you know, we're going to take some questions as we all do. Whenever we do Facebook Live, we take some questions from the audience. Taking questions. Uh, but before we do, got to tell you about Star Talk All Access. Of course, you know, uh, if you want to get exclusive original content, if you want video versions of the actual podcast that we do, Star Talk. Talk All Access is the way to do it. It is a subscription service, and um, we've got great stuff on there. This week, we've got an extended interview with Terry Crews, the muscle guy from uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He and Neil did an interview. We also have, from our holiday party, a Neil did which is uh, uh, where Neil talks to people who, uh, how can I put, comment on his videos. And they, they say all kinds of- It's a of video about the people who comment on the video. Yes, it is. Very meta. It's, it's nest. It's meta. Yes. Very meta. It's the modern expression. There you go. Yes. I'm so, uh, but uh, right now, because we're live, it gives us an opportunity to interact with you and if you want to ask a question, I mean, there's a bunch of people on here already saying, of course, they're just showing you all kinds of love. Oh, love you, Bill. And hey, look at this. Uh, Heather comes right out of the box. Can a four-dimensional math assist in developing time travel? How about that? Maybe. So we have four-dimensional math, everybody. Okay. So there's uh, Y and X and Z, and then there's time. So time's the fourth dimension. So ah. when you have an autopilot on a modern plane, for example, you have to put in not only where you want to go at what altitude above sea level, you have to also put in what time you want to get there. You can't put that in any time. There's a range of times that will permit. As far as time travel goes, seems to me you'd have to take the fourth dimension into account. <laughs> <laughs> so far, there's no way to travel backwards in time that anybody knows of. Uh, you can travel forward in time. We just did. <laughs> <laughs> so there is, there is a physics theory that you could build a time machine that would enable you to go back in time, but you can only go back to when the machine was built. And you have to travel at relativistic speeds, which would kill you, would tear you like a black hole. You'd be spaghettified. Spaghettified. You'd be some trouble. Now I'm so hungry. Right now, the answer simply, as far as I know, is No. There you go. So, uh, along with this, wishful thinking about time machines. I always remind people, just try to be in the moment. This is the time we're alive right now. Embrace it. There you Let's go. Make the world a better place. Take it, Chuck. Hey, so, uh, hey, great answer. And uh, hey, I love this. Uh, Glenn March just says, hey, Bill, which is more numerous, stars in the Milky Way or your collection of bow ties? <laughs> 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 right now, because of my new and fabulous relationship with Nick Graham, the clothing designer, I am now kind of about 500 bow ties. Really? There are about 200 billion stars in our galaxy, so... Oh, so there's kind of, what, six in one hand, yeah, half yeah, a dozen? Really, yeah, really, yeah, six in right. one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, let's find somebody who... Well, first of all, gosh, Bill, I got to tell you, people just love you, man. It is amazing. Like, uh, Bill, Bill, one, uh, one person just goes, Bill, Bill, well, Bill, Bill. Song. We love the song. Yeah, exactly. So, um... <laughs> Uh, hey, Bill, Frank Kane wants to know this. Hi, Bill. What is the best thing we can do as citizens to promote the education of science and hopefully teach the next generation that the truth and facts are actual things? Uh, well, that's what you, what you should do is watch Star Trek All Access Live. That's what you should do, right? Am I right, people? I, God, I love that answer. Marite. So, uh, yeah, you should watch this podcast and turn it up loud. You should, everybody, we have to participate. Right now, we have a situation where people are denying each other's points of view. We have to have a way of uh, communicating that involves a partnership. We're in this together. We're going to learn about climate change together. We're going to learn about the role of, um, of finances and tax structures together. We're going to do this together. And this is a, a difficult time. But I propose that if we just get started, the longest journey starts with a single step. So... Hi, everybody. I hope you're watching the show, all of you. 
There you go. Um, how about this one? This guy just says, Bill, can you please ring the bell? We love that. Um, boom. There you go. Asked, answered. Okay. You ask, you receive. Um, here. Oh, God. Did I miss this one? I just went. Uh, Feeling it. The excitement. The excitement. I'm losing it. Excitement slipping away. Bring it back now. Um, how, how do you handle a flat earther? Oh, you guys, there's not that many flat earthers. Yeah, I don't think I mean, that. I mean, it's think not that's a big, real thing. And that's not a real thing. I don't think you it's know, a, you I look, think these are people who are desperately in need of attention. In medieval texts, you find references to round earths. There hasn't been a real flat earth person in a long time. And you guys, we have pictures from space, if you're not happy with that. Go on a, go on a cruise. You get over the horizon, you can't see land anymore. Why is that? Just try it yourself. Don't right. take my word for it. There you go. Next time there's a lunar eclipse, look for the Earth's shadow on the moon. Um, Jess Woods wants to know, how do we push back against this age of science deniers, especially from uh, on a political side? How do we do it? How With do Star Talk Live. That's how we do it. What? Sure. Uh, no, the longest journey starts with a single step. So we're doing this kind of show to raise awareness that uh, the science, I claim, is the best idea people have ever had. Mm -hmm. We work very hard to find a justifiable true belief, to learn things about nature. The atomic number of rubidium is 37, and that's just how it is. It's very little evidence that it's any other number. So we embrace that, and we move forward along this line. We look at the neutrons in ice, and we count. We look at the bubbles in the snowflakes between the tines in ancient ice, and we figured out the world's getting warmer faster than ever in human history, so we got to do something about it. Yeah. Take it, Chuck. There you go. So Jim Farr, uh, with a P in front of it, so it's not Piffar. I guess it's Jim Farr. Hey, Bill, any idea how we can teach critical thinking to the youth of America? Uh, I, how, how do we get critical thinking as a... I don't say a curriculum, but... How, well, it is how, in science class. We yeah. wanted to have so-called critical thinking uh, being embraced. And just everybody, roughly, critical thinking involves at least three things. Uh, you have to start with a claim. Mm -hmm. and the claim has to have a way that it could be shown to be false. In the case of the... If I say the Earth is round and you say the Earth isn't round, you have to. we have to agree on a method by which we could show that the that the earth is not round. But then but in that one example, every time you try to do that, you find that the earth really is round. And then you have to respect authority. You have to agree on somebody that's an authority. If I claim the atomic number of rubidium is 37, we have to agree on a way to prove that with, I guess, a mass spectrometer. And uh, we could, of course, read scientific papers. So, uh, and then... Uh, and then I just always ask everybody, the simplest explanation is generally the best. A, a, a hypothesis and a scientific explanation should have all the features and parts it needs, but no more. The same with environmental regulations. Should have all the regulations we need, no more. No more. But all go. the ones we need. All the ones you need. And so what would the problem we got right now, Chuck. Yes. Nice. Yes is people are doubling down on their denial. And this is apparently a result of a phenomenon they call the backfire effect. I'm not trying to introduce a term to explain the phenomenon, but when people are in denial about evidence, they and they're confronted with new evidence that conflicts with their belief or worldview, they double down, it's human nature, you double down on your denial. Mm -hmm. And so right now we're in a phase where people who are very influential in the world's most uh, important, or the world's largest, most influential government, are in denial about climate change. So we got to work together in a partnership to show that there's a way to know that the earth is getting warmer because of humans and then we can all work together to resolve it. What do you say? Come on, everybody. It'll be fun. How could you deny an appeal such as that? Amazing. All right. Um Love you, Bill. So glad you're outspoken. That wasn't from me, even though I love you, too. I am outspoken. That was Johnny. I'm in here. That was Johnny out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, these, uh, a lot of you guys are kind of giving us the same questions. So That's your job, uh, Chuck. You're a filterer uh, of that, questions. I am the filterer of you're questions. The query filterer. You shall not pass. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Yeah, you're just, you're angry today, from? Chuck. You've had know. anger. I've had a lot of anger today. Today, today yeah. Because you got three kids. <laughs> Do you know what? That about the future. It says it all. That says it all. Um, 
Let's see here. Uh, I am a. Oh, hey, this is. Oh, God. Ra. Raja and Nim, Nirmal Raja. Hey, Bill, I'm a museum educator, and I talk to kids about a lot of things from dinosaurs to galaxies. What do you think that every single kid uh, in the general public should know about science? Oh, well, the big thing we want you to get, a student of any age, is that science is a process. It's a way we know the world. We have thought about this for centuries, and humans have come up with this idea that you observe a phenomenon in nature that you find remarkable. You'll notice my eyebrows went up as a representation like this. <laughs> and then you come up with an idea in your head that you th would think would explain this, what we call a hypothesis. And this is the idea below, hypothesis. Okay, so then you come up with a test to see if your hypothesis uh, might be true. And then you run a test and you compare what happened to what you thought would happen. And then you come up with another hypothesis. You continually revise it, working our way to truths, to the justifiable truth of belief, to, the, to something that you are pretty sure has got to be true. Atomic number of strontium is uh, uh, 38, for example. And so this process is we want everybody to embrace. And if you want to look around, we are on electric computer machines and all this is a result of the process of science. Humans have understood the four fundamental forces in nature that we know of so far. And we've created this technology that is based on our understanding of nature. And we eat food grown on farms based on our understanding of nature and natural processes. And we communicate around the world because we learn to navigate on this big ball. And we know that it's a ball because we've had a hypo we've come up with hypotheses, we've run tests, and we've compared what happened to what we thought would happen. That's the main thing. Science rules. There you have it. Well, hey, listen, thanks for all the love you guys are showing us on Facebook Live to Chris and Zachary and Jared and Burton and Jim and Jai and Christian and Tina and Dakota. Uh, we're not going to get to you guys, but just wanted to say hi. <laughs> and we, thank you. And we love you and thank you. Uh, and make sure that you go to StarTalkAllAccess.com. Subscribe to our service that gives you original, exclusive content, as well as everything that we do commercial-free. And until next time, Bill? Turn it up loud! Thanks for watching, everybody. Take some questions as we all do. Whenever we do Facebook Live, we take some questions from the audience. Taking questions. Uh, but before we do, got to tell you about Star Talk All Access. Of course, you know, uh, if you want to get exclusive original content, if you want video version, he and Neil did an interview. We also have from our holiday party a Neil did which is uh, uh, where Neil talks to people who, uh, how can I put, comment on his videos of the actual podcast that we do. Star Talk All Access is the way to do it. It is a subscription service, and um, we've got great stuff on there. This week, we've got an extended interview with Terry Crews, the muscle guy from uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, greetings, greetings. Bill Nye here on Facebook Live in the Star Talk studio. And uh, I'm here with uh, the remarkable and insightful and hilarious and very nice Chuck Nice. Oh. Chuck Nice. Hey, Bill. What's uh, happening? Chuck, How are you, buddy? While we're on Facebook Live, Facebook the world Live. could be watching if the world chose to The world could watch. be watching if the world chose to we watch. We have a topic today that you want to discuss. Well, you know, before we, uh, you know, we're going to...